So the last time I talked to you guys, I said that I had an issue wearing the glasses because of the light. Well, new place, the lights are fixed, but I can't find my glasses anymore, so I still can't look nerdy. Oh well, after the success of the very so popular video about the things that I like about software engineering, I am back to give you the other flip side of the coin, the things that I don't like about software engineering and this time we've got, I've got my phone here, we've got eight things. So that doesn't mean that I don't like software more than I like software because my other video had seven things that I discussed. This is just because I had more time to write my notes this time around. So yeah, you can tell that my storytelling still hasn't gotten better, but I have a feeling they'll get better too. So a little bit about me before we go and talk smack about software engineering. Just to preface this, I have, I'm have i not a pro at this profession. I'm just coming out of university. It's been, what, like five months of me finishing university, studying my Bachelor of Computer, uh, Bachelor of Software Engineering. Um, so take this with a very small, small, small grain of salt, anything I'm saying. But I feel like from what I have experienced and what I've like known by talking to other people, this is these are some of the things that have been common across like whatever age you are and however far you are along your career path. Okay, so the first one that I wanted to talk about is the fact that we, as software engineers, we usually sit in front of computers practically all day. And this COVID situation isn't really helping at all because now we're stuck in this room, rooms like these, and you don't, if you're somebody like me, you don't really have anyone to socialize with, and you're just sitting here either working or watching YouTube or in meetings. Now, if you're at work, like in a physical office environment, sure, you can be sort of going out and about talking to people, but if you think about it, the majority of the time you're sitting at a computer, I'd say at least 90% of the, your work hour, you're sitting at a computer and that's just not good for your posture and for me personally I try and make an effort to sort of stand up and move about but as unhealthy if you if you if you're looking at unhealthy professions um, right up there should be software engineering because you literally sit on chairs I mean there are standing desks but to be honest I don't like standing on standing desks because they make my feet hurt. I'd rather be walking, so maybe I need a treadmill, those treadmill walking desk things. Maybe that'll fix my problem. All right, so the next point that I had here was agile is hard, and I did a lot of takes on this camera trying to explain what I mean, but I completely destroyed the explanation. But if you're a software engineer, you know what I'm saying. So, and if you, if you're, if you don't know what I'm saying, I'm, I'm going to try and make a separate video about this because there's a very in-depth topic that we can go into. But let's just let's just keep number two at Agile is hard. Alright, so the next thing is that as a developer, I can write code at a particular speed, right? And so can everyone else. But where you're bottlenecked by is when you try and push this, when you try and merge this code into production or into whatever the next development branch is for your business, and you need to wait for somebody else to review your code. Now in businesses you have this typical structure where you have one or two people approve or like look over your code before it gets merged so that way you sort of have val are, are validating um, the code that you're pushing. But the amount of time it takes to do that, to chase people who are going to approve your code, especially in startups where you don't really have many people assigned to just review code, it's sort of everyone has to take the self-initiative to go ahead and do that, but if, you, if you're just focusing on delivering your code, getting your bunch of work done, you don't want to be looking through someone else's code and pointing out mistakes. So yeah, as, as a developer, you have to sort of go and chase after people and sort of offer favors and, and in return of you getting um, a review or an approval done. And yeah, it takes a long time. Now the fourth thing, and this is the biggest one in my opinion, is that 
software engineering requires you to constantly be learning. Now, if you think about it, every five or so years, you, you start to see this new technology emerge. And if you're a seasoned developer, like somebody who's not as young as me, but if you're like this, if you're, if you're experienced and if you've, if you've been working for like 10, 15 years, if this new technology comes along, you have to spend the same amount of time as somebody who will be spending time in university figuring this out, learning this technology, because who knows, your business might ask you to implement whatever the new thing is. And now if you don't, if you're not caught up with those things, you're stuck and you become invaluable. So what I'm getting to is these books you see behind me is my attempt at staying on top of things. Well, now they aren't programming books, but they're books nonetheless, but you get the idea. You have to constantly be learning. Now, the next thing that I've got on my list is debt items. And if you don't know what debt items are, they are basically the nice word for saying you committed bad code to production and you can't be bothered to fix it. Now, firstly, you should not be committing any poorly written code into production, but because you're supposed to be iterating and just constantly moving, you're often told that whatever hack that you wrote to sort of get something to work, that it's fine for now, and then you can come back and come back and fix it later, and you can just add it to the list of ever-growing debt items. And trust me, it's I don't think anyone ever goes back to to that particular debt item. Now this is especially to anyone who's coming out of university or just learning how to code right now, make sure that you instill this discipline inside of yourself that you're not going to commit code to production that you don't personally think is good enough. If it's not been tested, if it's just a hack, it's going to come down later on and it's going to make you, it's going to bring you hell, basically. So try your best not to. Now, I know these things are inevitable. And sometimes you do have to let the type items um, slip if, you've, if you're time bound and stuff. But do definitely try to not actively engage in the idea of just adding items to debt. Now, I for one do not enjoy writing tests. And I don't know why it is that everyone that I talk to in my company or my friends who, who are software engineers, nobody seems to like to write tests and they are important but people just can't be bothered because I mean they've got software working but you have to write this test to prove that the software that you wrote works and it's a good thing I'm not saying that it's ever a bad thing but it's just a personality trait that a lot of software engineers just do not love to write tests and finally on my list of items we've got working with undocumented and horrible code yeah, I don't know what to say about that. It just it just boils my blood whenever I think about the last time that I encountered this particular bit of code or this package that I'm importing and it's just undocumented. Like I know that's like it's it's especially worse when that's the only one package available to serve your need and then when you import it, it's just it just doesn't work. Or you just don't know how to get it to work because there's no documentation or it's just poorly written. It breaks at edge cases. Yeah, I don't I don't I don't particularly enjoy it. I don't think anybody else enjoys um, working with bad, bad code, but you just have to sometimes. And yeah, well, that's the end of this video. Um, as you can tell, still working on my storytelling. It's it's, it's, it's going to get better. Um, but I just wanted to sort of do the minus side of the plus video that I made for software engineering. So this is my attempt at that. Also, I moved into a new place and it's incredibly hot in here. Um, so I've got this fan running, which I can't run when I shoot videos. So I'll, I'll just, I just sweat or I just take a break in shooting this video midway and I just turn the fan on and just sit in front of the fan for a bit. Um, but yeah, if you, if you want to, if you, if you feel a little bit sad for me make sure you press the like button 
Um, if you enjoy these sort of videos and you'd like to support me, press the subscribe button. That's it. Thank you very much. Have a good day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.